Okay, what is up, everybody? Hello, hello, and welcome back. And I should say that because uh, <clears throat> today is my first day back from break. Yesterday was my day off for the week, as you know. Did some stuff IRL, as they say, and spent some time with the wife. Had a good day, but, uh, oh, man. Just to forewarn everyone before we even get into the pre-stream today, because i got a lot to talk about. we got good, positive announcements. We've got some good stuff coming up that I want to talk about. Um... But just to forewarn all of you, I am feeling pretty tired today. Uh, so what happened yesterday was I spent a big day, busy day with my wife out and about. But it was very hot here in Seattle. In fact, it was only supposed to be probably about 80 degrees. Um, it hit uh, upwards of 90 plus. And, you know, being out all day in the sun was very, very draining. Uh, with all the stuff and errands we had to run and the things we had to do. Um, being out in the sun basically kind of really, really drained us to the point where we kind of got overheated and we came home, uh, you know, yesterday night and we're trying to cool down. The house was hot because we hadn't planned, I mean, we hadn't expected it to be this hot. So we didn't leave the air conditioner on or anything when we went out. When we came home, the house was like really hot and stuffy and we were like, oh man, this is some crap, you know, we weren't expecting this at all. Um... <laughs> And so, you know, trying to relax and cool down at night and unwind and get ready to, to come back to, to streaming and everything today. But Kat really wasn't feeling very good. She had a really bad stomach ache out of nowhere, probably because of the heat. You know, it could have been part heat exhaustion or whatever you want to call it. Um, so she went to bed early, and I basically just kind of hung around downstairs and watched a few things uh, on Netflix. Watched a couple episodes of uh, Black Mirror and stuff like that, you know, just killing time. And I tried to let her basically try to get as much sleep as she could get before I went in there to wake her up, you know, so I could go to sleep. I knew, you know, going into the bedroom was going to wake her up again. I didn't want to, you know, disturb her. So basically, I let her sleep a long time. Um, and then finally, when I went to went, went to go to bed, now I realized I was all screwed up. All my, my schedule was all out of whack, you know. Normally, I would have been asleep like hours earlier. And now my body was, like, wired awake. I couldn't sleep. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Plus, like I said, it was hot. So it was, like, stuffy. And it's, like, now trying to sleep in a stuffy, hot-ass house. Uh, you know, it was just not a good time. It was very annoying. And it sucks because normally I would come back from a day off feeling, like, really refreshed. And by the way, not to say it wasn't a good day off. It absolutely was. You know, I love spending time with my wife, but... Just because it was abnormally warm and the weather hadn't predicted it was even going to be that warm, uh, it threw us off completely and screwed us up. So I barely got any sleep. You know, I, I probably, being quite honest with all of you, probably working on about four hours of sleep right now, um, <clears throat> which is no good, obviously. And, uh, you know, I'm doing my best. I've already drank almost an entire Mio here. Uh, full of caffeine to try to get myself going. I actually ate breakfast this morning. I had a bagel with cream cheese, which I almost never do. But I said, I'll try to power myself today with some breakfast uh, and see how it goes. And the thing that kind of sucks about this is today I'm doing Super Mario Maker 2. And this is pretty much the last major Super Mario Maker 2 stream I'm doing for a while. I am going to go back to it eventually. But this is like the last major one I'm doing for a while because I'm going to be starting up my Mario 64 playthrough this week, which I've announced Pretty early in the morning this morning when I couldn't fucking fall asleep on Twitter. I'll talk about that on the pre-stream. I know that's a hot topic everyone's talking about right now. Everyone already came into the chat with questions and everything about it. Um, <clears throat> so, I will let you know. Um, I will let you know later on in this pre-stream more about that. But anyway, um, yeah, it sucks. Normally, I'd like to come back feeling energized and ready, raring to go, and I really don't feel like that today. And today, I know it's going to be a very challenging day whenever I do these Mario Maker streams. You know, you guys, you guys challenge me with some really crazy, complicated, user-created style levels and content. And even though I enjoy that, it's going to be pretty tough to do when I'm tired as hell. You know, I have no lie, like, my eyes were burning so bad this morning when I woke up. And I had to put eye drops in my eyes and everything. And I'm like, oh, man. I just hope that I can hold it together today. <laughs> you know, I might need to, at some point, I might need to take a, a, a preemptive break and go grab another Mio energy uh, energy water thing to keep going here. Um, you know, but that's life, I guess. What can you do, right? You got to tough through it. I, just, I had a day off yesterday. I'm not going to, you know, 
Oh, I'm not gonna work today. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. If, as if I had that luxury. Uh, no, I'm here in full force today. All right. So first, before we get to the hot topic everyone wants to talk about, let's talk about this week and what you guys can expect over the course of this streaming week. First of all, I'm back today for six straight streaming days. My next day off will be next Monday. So, you know, six straight days of full streaming, you know, double stream days. Uh, a great variety of content coming up this week, including continuing playthroughs, concluding playthroughs, uh, you know, new playthroughs starting up. Um, you know, lots of good stuff. Lots of good stuff this week. Let's talk a little bit about that, okay? Uh, excuse me. So, first of all, um, today, what are we doing? I've already explained. Today we're doing uh, some Mario Maker. And I'm excited for Mario Maker. I hope you guys are excited for Mario Maker. Uh, it's a very fun time whenever I play it. I always have, you know, have a lot of fun. Even though it could be incredibly frustrating with the levels that some of you guys have created. Uh, in general, it ends up being uh, very entertaining. For, for, you know, multiple reasons. Let's be very honest here. It's fun to watch me struggle and rage at a stage, but at the same time, it's fun to cool to see the, cre the creativity that people put together when it comes to these stages and, you know, what they've whipped up and how long it could take me potentially to beat a stage, right? Um, it's pretty entertaining, I'll admit it, all right? And it's, it, is it a little sad that this is basically going to be the final time that I'm playing the game as a major stream, at least for the, for the short term? I mean, I guess so. I guess you could say that. Um... The thing is, like I said, was I'm starting up with Mario 64, which is the viewer's choice playthrough you guys voted for a couple months ago. There's no way that I could do Mario 64 and this at the same time. There's it wouldn't work. There's too much Mario overload, um, you know, for one for for a week. Can you imagine if in one week, okay, I was playing Mario, basically like four or five days out of the week, Mario people would go nuts. They'd be like, oh my god, it's too much Mario overload. And, I thought you were a variety streamer. Why are you doing all the Nintendo Mario content? All right, and I, I get that. I totally get that. I, I kind of agree that that's too much, and that's why we're not going to be doing that. That's why uh, I'm going to basically be mixing it up with other stuff, and we're not going to be going full-blown Mario Mo. Okay? <laughs> so, last major attempt at... Well, not so major attempt. Last major uh, stream of Mario Maker 2 content. I'm excited for it. I hope you guys are excited for it. Uh, I'll be doing all kinds of user-created levels today that you guys submitted. I got a bunch of emails here from people who created levels to check out. And in addition to that, uh, I'm sure I'm going to be trying out, as I usually do, the top-rated levels as well. What we'll be doing is alternate between user-created levels that you guys submitted and the ones that are you know the top-rated currently here in the game itself. And uh, we're going to do that all day. That'll be the whole stream. Okay? Fair enough. All right. Now, later tonight, the late stream tonight at 6.45 p.m. Pacific time is indeed going to be uh, more Judgment, the continuation of that game. Yes, I know I'm playing a lot of Judgment recently on the late streams. That's perfectly fine. It's allowing me to get very far into the game. At this point, we're in Chapter 9 of 12. And apparently, there's Chapter 12. And then there's an epilogue chapter as well. That's, that's, that's lengthy, too. Um... So, basically, essentially, there's 13 chapters to the game, is what I'm being told. So, we're basically in chapter 9 of 13. Um, and, you know, the game's great. I love it. I love playing this game. Uh, as you know, I've been doing a little bit more side content, because I heard that coming up, there's a lot of story development, and there's not opportunity to do much side content if you don't do it now. Um, so, there you go. And that's, that's going to be how it goes, you know, for tonight. Two hours of judgment on stream. Tomorrow, Wednesday, we're going to be wrapping up Wolfenstein Youngblood. At least that's what it looks like. Um, after playing it for two days earlier this week, already it seems I've unlocked the final mission, if not the final mission branch of, of missions. You see what I mean? Um, I've probably got like two or three maybe more side missions left to do and check out to try to level up a little bit more to prepare for the final mission and then doing the actual what appears to be the final mission. We'll see if it is. Um, you know, and go from there. But I'm excited for that. That's going to be tomorrow, all right, on the main gameplay stream. Then tomorrow night, Wednesday night, is my weekly Black Ops 4 Blackout stream where I do Battle Royal gameplay. And even though, yes, there's gameplay going down, it's more about the interactions that I have with you guys than anything else. So that's going to be tomorrow night. Thursday, 
I'm going to do a major stream of Dragon Quest Builders 2. All right. The game has opened up and become very fun now because we're on a new island that's all about mining. It's an arid desert-like climate where we're mining for minerals. And the plot has, in my opinion, gotten actually better. I think it's actually a lot more entertaining than it had been the last stream or two. And I have a lot of fun with it. So I'm looking forward to more of that on Thursday. And then Thursday night will be more judgment. Two more hours of judgment on the stream. Okay. Friday, if all goes according to plan, is going to be the premiere of Madden 20. And it's going to be the story mode, just like I did last year. Now you may be saying, well, Madden 20, I thought you said you're not buying it. Well, I'm not, but someone, a viewer offered the other day to buy it for me. Basically, they said that on Thursday they were going to send me a bunch of PSN credit to get the game for Friday. So as long as this happens, because I've been you know, told this is going to happen, then this Friday I'm getting Madden 20 and we're going to be playing the story mode of Madden 20 to check it out and see exactly what it is, okay? Apparently, if people are saying it's going to be entertaining and fun. People seem to like it last year when I did it as well. So just some of that comes starting on Friday. Friday night... I'm going to be doing MLB, The Show 19, or Am I? All right? And let me explain what I mean by that. I don't have to do it. All right? Um, it has been part of my chill stream lineup, and it has been a late night stream. Uh, last night, we or last night, last week, we pretty much had an epic conclusion to everything where I did a clutch play at the very end, and I basically posed it to you guys. Do you want to see me keep playing MLB, or are you guys tired of it? All right. If you guys are absolutely tired of MLB and don't ever want any more, I don't have to do it anymore. All right. So what I'm going to do is starting today, I'm going to start asking all of you daily. Would you like to see MLB chill streams continue? Because I could do one Friday night or not because I could do something completely different. All right. What? I don't know yet. But if people are basically like, if we're tired of MLB, we don't want to see MLB anymore, uh, then I would I would consider doing something else on Friday night. Okay. Fair enough. So let me know. Um, ah, let me know what you guys think. I'm already seeing some opinions in the stream chat. Keep in mind, this is the first time I bring it up, so I'm curious to see. Uh, curious to see what you guys have to say, you know have to say over the course of the next three four days to determine what we do Friday night. Okay, we'll see. All right. If not, if I don't do MLB, then I'll probably think of something on the, on the fly. A, you know, a session of something random, you know, who knows? I'll think about it. Okay, maybe I'll, hell, maybe I'll do retro Street Fighter. Maybe I'll try to play, like, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike or something Friday night. You know, something completely different that I haven't done in a long time just to, to do some variety for the streams, okay? We'll see. All right, then on Saturday, Saturday during the day, again, if we if I, if I did get Madden, then it's going to be more Madden. I'll probably play Madden two days in a row just to see what the hell it's all about, okay? Um, and then Saturday night probably will be more Judgment. Just being honest here, all right? Now, finally, finally, everyone, the information that you guys wanted, here it comes. Are you ready? Because people, have, number one, have been dying to know, when am I starting my Super Mario 64 playthrough? That's number one, all right? Number two, I've been alluding in a, for the last week to the fact that sometime in, in August, I was going to basically tell you guys some good news, or I may have some good news coming up. Um, I, I, honestly, I'll be honest with you. I don't think I was really, I don't, I wasn't, I wasn't saying this right. I wasn't describing this correctly. It's not necessarily, oh, good news. It's basically like something, a positive reveal that I could do for all of you. Okay. Something that I think you guys would really enjoy. Um, but I don't want to give you too many details because I'll just spoil the whole thing. What's the point of having a big surprise build up if I spoil the surprise, right? Um, <clears throat> and so... Uh, what I, I was thinking about this during my day off yesterday, okay? And I was thinking, how can I combine two really positive things, right, that people are looking forward to into one kind of cool event and hopefully, you know, make, take this as an opportunity to help myself out a little bit because of, as you guys know, financially have not been doing well. And I'm going to be very honest with all of you right now. I am just a couple days away from having all my bills come due, for the early month and it's not looking good again and i'm like damn this could be an opportunity where not only do we combine something people have been anticipating for a long time on stream but i could use it as a motivation to maybe do some tip fundraising and then i can actually help myself out and maybe make this month a little bit lighter and not as stressful and also do a big positive reveal on the stream this could be a really good opportunity all right 
So I basically brainstormed this during my day off. Um, and so here we go. Here's what I came up with. All right, here's what I came up with. All right. Um, this coming Sunday, which would be August 4th, I believe. Let me double check that. One, two, th- yes, this Sunday is August 4th. This Sunday, I'll be doing a special marathon event for the launch of Super Mario 64. So that doesn't just mean, oh, I'm going to be playing it for four hours. It means I'm going to be doing a stream starting around my usual time. And it's basically going to be a marathon-style stream where I'm playing Super Mario 64 pretty much all day long. Uh, you know, starting, you know, after you do the pre-stream, it's, what, 11.30? So, you know, start 11.30 and then maybe every two hours take a break. Um, but then come back to it. You know, with all intents and purposes, the marathons typically run till around 7, 7.30 p.m. Pacific time. Um, so we could get a significant chunk of gameplay into Super Mario 64 in just this very first session um, this coming Sunday. Okay, so that's going to be this this Sunday. I figure special Super Mario 64 marathon event. All right, pretty cool. All right, pretty cool. Immediately I see Dragon Quest fan. Well, it's Evo Sunday. Who cares? My audience is not an Evo audience. They're not. I don't play fighting games competitively at all. There's very little crossover there. And in fact, I've barely played fighting games uh, recently. If you're interested in fighting games, chances are you're going to be watching Evo and not my stream anyway. <laughs> so I don't know why you're even saying that. I don't. I could give two shits when Evo is or what they're doing. I don't care about Evo. I don't care about competitive fighting games. I don't know why anyone even brings this up anymore. Holy crap. All right, so anyway, that's this Sunday. All right, this Sunday, the, the premier marathon of Super Mario 64. All right, now, <clears throat> here's the deal, everybody. Um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be attempting, attempting to do a full run of the game, all right? And what I mean by that is I'm going to be attempting to try to get all the stars in every world. I'm going to challenge myself to do so. People have been asking me, Phil, are you just going to try to rush the game and beat it standard, or are you actually going to, you know, take your time and try to get all the stars? And the answer is I I want to give it an honest try of trying to get all of the stars in the game. All right, I, I'm not promising I'm going to do it. I'm definitely not promising that. That's going to be crazy for me to go out of my way and promise the world of something that I don't know if I have a skill level that I could even do. You know, I remember the game being pretty challenging back in the day, and I remember it, you know, me dying a million times. Now, keep in mind, I was much younger back then when the game was a new game, but still, uh, I don't know how I'm going to do playing this game. You know, I could end up sucking and, you know, taking forever. It's funny because Crest the Angel in stream chat just said, Oh, well, if you don't go for the full 100% run, you could just beat it in one sitting. I'm like, dude, no, 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 no. If I was good at Mario 64, I could beat it in one sitting. You want to know how many times I've played Mario 64 in my life? Twice. When it came out in the 90s, and one more time when it was ported to the DS or 3DS or whatever it was ported to, I played that. Actually, it might have even been the Game Boy Advance. I don't even remember. No, it wasn't the Game Boy Advance. It was. I think it was the original DS, right? Had that version. I played it twice. That's it. That's, you know... I'm not a Mario 64 fucking speedrunner. I'm not, you know what I mean? I'm not good at this game. So I get the feeling this is going to be a game that's going to take me quite some time um, to get through. The marathon will basically be like the icing, you know, the first third of the game, the first half of the game, and then it's going to be spread out, you know, me playing several more sessions to try to 100% the game, okay? But I will try to 100% the game. I am not promising that I'm going to 100% it. But I will give it a shot. I will try to do all the stars. Now, keep in mind, this is going to basically rely on you guys helping me out, too. Because I'm not even going to know how to get all the stars. I'm not going to remember anything from this game. It's going to be like playing it the first time again. Seriously, it will be. Um, So I'm going to rely on your help to try to figure this stuff out. Okay? So that's going to be starting on Sunday. All right? This marathon event. Now, since... There's some other things going on, as I told you guys. I'm using this event as a way to raise funds via tips. There's going to be a tip uh, goal during the course of the stream. I'm not going to lie to you guys. The tip goal is going to be pretty sizable. All right, I'm going to be trying to raise a certain amount of funds over the course of Sunday to help myself out uh, with bills and the like this month. And I'm hoping that if I can raise this tips goal, it's going to hopefully be enough to make it so that it's not... Uh, basically a shitty month for me, you know, these past couple of months have been pretty bad where, 
Uh, I have multiple weeks of being overdrawn on my bank account, and some things get paid, some things don't get paid. And then whenever I get paid by Twitch, I gotta play catch up, and it's a nightmare. Um, so what I'm hoping is that I can get a, you know a tips goal raised during the course of the Mario 64 stream. I think that's a great opportunity because that's a game people have wanted to see me play for years and years. You guys have been asking for it now for weeks ever since it became the Viewer's Choice playthrough. So it's a great opportunity to get butts in the sheets, as they say, and get people excited and motivated to contribute to a special tips goal. All right, now, if we hit the tips goal, all right, during the marathon stream, I am going to be doing a special positive reveal during the stream. That's all the information I'm going to be giving you guys. That's it. I'm not going to spoil it because if I spoil it, then there's no point in the surprise. There's no point in building the anticipation if I tell you what it is. All right. There's a positive reveal that I will do during the stream if we hit the tips goal during the course of the stream on Sunday. Okay. What kind of a positive reveal? All I'm going to say is this. You're going to love it. That's all I'm going to say. You're really going to enjoy it. I think it's going to be something very positive and fun for everyone. And... You know, it's something that, that well, all right, see, I'm not even going to say it. I'm not even going to say it. I'm going to spoil it if I give you any more details. Seriously, if I say another thing, I will spoil it. So I don't want to, okay? I don't want to. So that being said, um, I almost did. I almost just gave you more information. I was like, oh, shit. See, the thing is I would love to, to, do, to, to tell you more, but then what's the point of building it up, right? So, oh, by the way, warning. Bottle crunch ahead in three, two, one. Okay. So yeah, and and just just for the record, again, I want to say I apologize because I've been describing this as positive news. It's not news. It's not like oh, here's some positive news for you. That's not what it is. Because some people are like oh, well you're gonna make us you know contribute to to get news. No, it's not that. I've been saying it wrong. I really don't know how to describe it. All right, a positive reveal. Right. I don't know how else to describe it without spoiling it so there you go it's i i promise you if we hit this tips goal on sa a sunday um you guys are absolutely going to love the positive reveal and let me just put it this way it could lead to some really cool stuff in the future as well all right that's all i'm gonna say that's all i'm gonna say there you go now you now you've even gotten a little bit of extra info see what i've done there all right so that's the deal. Let's review. Today I'm playing Mario Maker 2, the final major session, because Mario 64 is starting up this week, and then to tonight it's Judgment. Tomorrow, <clears throat> it's going to be the conclusion, hopefully, of Wolfenstein Youngblood, combined with my weekly Black Ops 4 Black Ops stream. Okay? Um, Thursday, it's going to be uh, Dragon Quest Builders 2 as a major stream, and more Judgment. Friday, it's going to be Madden, as long as it actually does get gifted to me, as has been promised. You know, someone promised me they were going to gift it to me this week. So as long as that works out, Madden on Friday. And then maybe MLB Friday night. If not, if people collectively tell me, nah, you know, we definitely don't want, um, we don't want, you know, any more MLB. Then maybe I'll just do something random. Maybe I'll do a fighting game or something like I said, Okay. Saturday, probably more Madden. Again, as long as it's, as it's donated to me as uh, as has been promised, more Madden. And then uh, Saturday night, more Judgment. And then Sunday, a marathon, the premiere of Super Mario 64 in a marathon setting. And there will be a tips-raising goal. And if we hit the goal during the stream, there will be a big positive reveal during the stream that you guys are going to love. All right. There you go. Fair enough. There you go. That's the week schedule. And like I said, then Monday I'm off, and then I'm back on Tuesday. So, whoo! There you go, guys. That's the news. I hope you guys are excited. Okay. Now a couple other things. Uh, today is July 30th. Okay. That means there's only two days left in the month. That also means there's a few things here that are coming to a close. The first is, as you guys know, we had a sub goal for the month of 525 subs. As of this morning, we're at five 458. I had already written this off earlier this week, but then people begged me to bring back the sub goal. They wanted it back because they thought that we could hit it. I brought it back. All right. I brought it back. What is the sub goal? Well, if we hit 525 subs by the end of the month, which is a day and a half from now, we'll be doing a rage a thon. You guys will be able to nominate and then vote on games that cause me insane rage. And I'll be playing those in a marathon setting. However, we need to hit the sub goal. We're not even close. So, very simple. 
and very matter of fact, if you guys want to see this goal happen, which I think you would enjoy watching this goal happen, you need to subscribe to the channel. If you're not subbed right now and you want many benefits, including over 30 uh, emotes that you'll be able to use during the streams, if you don't want to have to watch advertisements when I run ad breaks, and if you want a cool chat crown batch to show how long you've been a supporter, please consider subbing to the channel. Day and a half left to hit that goal. Okay, guys? Now, in addition to that, this also means that since we're at the end of the month, there's a day and a half left for you to pledge to my Patreon for this month's campaign and get in on the perks that will be divvied out next month. You can check this out at patreon.com forward slash dark side fill. All right. I'm appreciative of any level of pledge, but if you get, take a look there on the website, it'll actually describe on my page all the different perks that you can earn depending on your level of contributions. Some of the best ones include getting a private Q&A video made for yourself. You know, you get all your burning questions answered or being able to participate in special priority versions of monthly events. So, for example, if we do this Rageathon, uh, patrons will get priority access to nominating a game for the Rageathon. They get basically a better chance of getting their game selected. All right. Um, so give it a look. Patreon.com forward slash dark side Phil. Thanks to everyone who pledges. Day and a half left to pledge to that. All right. Just wanted to call those two things out early because the month is about to end. And like I said, last chance to contribute via those methods and have them count for the month. Fair enough. Whew. All right, everybody. What's up, Magnus Flame Beard? How's it going, man? Thanks for the cheer. Uh, so, now, guys, let's go into the gratuitous plug segment of the pre-stream, where basically I am, in a nutshell, going to tell you the ways you can contribute and help out, all right? As you guys know, I'm a full-time Twitch streamer. I used to be a full-time YouTuber, and before that, I was just a normal dude. I did YouTube as, as a hobby, not a living, and I did it for two and a half years as a fun hobby until I got laid off from my job unexpectedly and really had nowhere else to turn so i was able to to through the luck of, of timing and the internet i was able to turn my hobby into a way to make a living pretty crazy and i was a full-time youtuber for six years then youtube's ad revenue bottom fell out in 2017 when the ad apocalypse hit and sadly when that happened um i had to convert myself from being a full-time youtuber to a full-time streamer i feel that the result is incredibly positive. I love being an interactive streamer with all of you. I love the interactive streams that we do. And I feel that I, I'm a better person for it. I really, I seriously mean it. Like, instead of being in an isolation booth doing my own thing, I now have more of these organic streams with all of you interactions and everything. I love it, okay? That being said now, my primary income comes from crowdfunding on the streams because guess what? The YouTube ad revenue has all but dried up. It's almost nothing every month i'm not even kidding it's less than one tenth of what i once made on youtube is what i make on there now so i rely on you guys to help support and allow me to continue to do what i love there are many ways that you can support i've already mentioned subscribing to the channel or patreon i will mention a couple more right now and then i will mention the best way that you can contribute right now because right now i really do need your support all right so outside of subbing and or you know pledging to my patreon you can check out my Teespring store. On my Teespring store, there's a lot of merchandise, including t-shirts primarily, but there's other stuff there like mugs and stickers that you can buy. You get a cool collectible and it helps me out. So take a look at my Teespring store. The plugs have been here on the pre-stream all day. It's teespring.com forward slash stores forward slash DSP gaming. <clears throat> if you're live on the stream and you cheer, sub, or tip, I'm going to give you a verbal shout out during the stream. Now keep in mind today I'm playing Mario. A little bit tougher to give a shout out on the fly, but I'll do my best between deaths and or stages to give shout outs for your contributions all right um keep in mind what i say and do on my stream is subjective i have to abide by twitch's terms of service and i also try to maintain a positive vibe meaning if you try to contribute today to then get me something that's going to get me in trouble by saying it or you're trying to derail the stream of the topic that's dramatic or oh someone insulted you blah 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 i'm not going to play that game all right um i have the ability to pick and choose what i say and do on my stream that's a great thing that i have ultimate control over it I'm not obligated in any way, shape, or form to say or do anything. I don't have to respond to anything or any contribution. However, I do go out of my way to try to respond to those who positively contribute and want to see things go well. So thank you to everyone who does contribute. And uh, yeah, th just thanks for that in advance. Now, we have a stream stats leaderboard at the top of the screen that I'll update uh, for the top cheerer and top tipper of the day. So that's an extra, extra way for you to get recognition. In addition... You guys may notice at the top of your stream chats, there is a cheering leaderboard that reset while I was gone. That's right. It resets Sunday night into Monday. So now that I'm back on Tuesday, new streaming week, new cheering leaderboard. 
And so it's pretty fresh right now. Only a few people have cheered here on the pre-stream so far. As you see, they're already up on the leaderboard, right? The top 10 cheers of the week will get shown there. So ample opportunity, especially today, now that the leaderboard has reset, to get yourself noticed with contributions because it's basically very low levels. All right, just saying. Very nice. Okay, Um. now, last but not least, everyone, before we get into shout-outs for those who have contributed, being very honest with you, I just talked about uh, you know this fundraising tip event that I'm doing on Sunday. Um, there's a reason for it. I Financially, I'm in the worst position I've ever been in my life. Like I said frequently, I'm having my bank account overdrawn. Bills are not getting paid, and then I have to catch up and pay them later. It's not a good situation. It's really bad. Um, if you want to help me out the absolute most right now, the best way you can help me is by tipping me. When you tip me, those funds are available immediately for me to use to pay bills. And that's exactly what I've been doing. All of your tips have been going straight towards bills uh, for the past few months and it's helped me out a, an amazing amount. I'm not even exaggerating. Like without your tips, I would have been screwed. So please consider tipping me today during the stream if at all you can. Keep in mind that number one, any contribution is not mandatory. It's appreciated. It keeps stuff going. But I'm just happy that you guys come and hang out with me on a daily basis. I really am. Um... And it's amazing that you guys enjoy spending your time with me here all day, every day, right? I love it. That being said, your contributions help a lot. So not mandatory, but much appreciated. If you are going to contribute today and you have the choice of how to contribute out of all the ways I just you know, mentioned, please tip me, all right? There's two ways you can tip me. Below the stream, there's a tips chart button that you can click on. Or if you don't see that, you can type exclamation point tip into the stream chat. That'll bring up the link to go to my PayPal tips page where you can either be anonymous or you can make up a name, or you can leave your real name. It all depends on what you want to do. Um, you know, a lot of people are afraid that if they contribute on the internet, someone will harass them or whatever. So fair enough. If that's what you're afraid of, you don't have to put out your real information. In addition, you don't need a PayPal account to tip. You can just use a debit or credit card and pay for it as anything else on the internet. There's a button to do so right on my PayPal tips page. So please consider it. All right, guys. Thank you very much for everything. Thanks for listening. I had a lot to talk about on the pre-stream today. I got through it all. All right. So, I think it's time now for us to get to shout-outs. Fair enough? All right. All right, guys. Let's see here. So, we actually start off with some people who contributed while I was not here. And what I actually want to do, let me refresh the page. Because sometimes my Streamlabs feed doesn't catch everything when I'm not here. I just want to be sure that I do give credit where credit is due. I don't want to skip anyone by accident because it didn't update properly. Okay. It's updating. All right. So, we actually start off with... Oh, God. It locked up. Are you kidding me? No. Okay. Here we go. It unlocked. We are starting off with Bambino. Bambino has resubscribed for 21 months and he resubscribed during my day off. Thank you very much, Bambino, for the support. That is much appreciated, okay? Uh, then we have Rob8777, who resubscribed for 15 months in a row, 19 months total this morning, and said nearly two years as a Philippian. I love you, dude. Well, indeed, I don't use that term, Philippian, but if that is why you want to describe yourself, great, I guess. Thank you very much for the support, Rob8777. Thank you, thank you, and thank you some more. Buff David Bennett has resubscribed for six months. Thank you for the resub, Buff David Bennett. With all these resubs, I'll probably have to double check on the sub count before we start with the stream and see if it's moved at all. Um, and then Buff David Bennett did the first cheer of the day, a 50-bit cheer. He says, I know you're a big wrestling fan. Uh, can the new AEW compete with WWE? Well, the bottom line is they are competing with WWE. Even if, Whether or not they're successful is really the question, or if they will be successful. Um... But they're definitely competing with WWE right now. They're outside of WWE. Most of the things that compete with them are indie. And what I mean by that is you're talking Ring of Honor. You're talking New Japan Pro Wrestling. You're talking uh, Lucha Underground. Uh, stuff like that, right? And, you know, Progress Wrestling, Evolve, etc. I mean, they don't hold a candle to the size, the scope, the grandiose nature, and the funding that WWE has. The only other one that you can mention would be Impact. Now, that is a whole entity to itself because it, it basically has changed hands so many times over the years and it's been through the ringer. 
Uh, Impact still has some reach. Definitely has some reach. And a lot of people who are in the indies end up going to Impact if they don't go to WWE. Um, so I would say they're also competition. But the reason AEW is a little different is because it's basically owned, operated, uh, and primarily run by wrestlers, even though you do have a couple investors there that aren't wrestlers that are part of it too. Uh, primarily, it's pro wrestlers doing the job, right? They're doing everything. They're, they're directing things behind the scenes. They're sucking up the talent that's leaving WWE. For example, Johnny Moxley, a.k.a. Dean Ambrose. And it'll be interesting to see how they do now that their television show starts in just a couple of months, right? Isn't it September? They got their, their, their TV deal with TNT, and they're going to start up. Um, I won't be a part of it, sadly. You know, I, I used to be the guy who was in the know and watched all pro wrestling. Sadly, those days have passed. I'm not that guy anymore. Um, I barely have enough time to watch just WWE stuff. I may be watching even less WWE stuff now since the WWE Network updated their app on my Amazon Fire TV and it doesn't work anymore. Like, I tried to watch stuff on it this week and it was all desynced and fucked up. And they better fix it because if they don't, by the like next week, I'm probably just going to cancel WWE Network forever and say, fuck this. I'm serious about that too. Like, I'll probably just watch Raw and SmackDown and say, fuck WWE because if the app doesn't work, I'm not paying the money anymore. Um, <clears throat> but anyway... Um, that being said, uh, you know, I, I'm not the guy who watches all the wrestling anymore. I don't watch any indies. I don't watch Impact. I don't watch any of that stuff. And AEW is going to be on TNT. I don't have television. I'm serious. All I have is I have Hulu to watch on-demand stuff, but I don't have live television. I wouldn't be able to even watch the shows. So I'm not going to be in the loop on AEW at all. If anything, you guys will probably be keeping me in the loop with AEW and telling me what's going on with it because I'm not going to know, all right? And by the way, I would like to know if you guys are watching AEW and following it and you want to let me know what you think. By all means, please let me know, but it's not something that it looks like it's going to be within my means to be following. Um, so I, I wish them luck. I think that competition breeds improvement because when there's no direct competition, essentially you become lazy. You become... Uh, what do they call it? Complacent. Oh, we just keep doing what we're doing. Do we have no, nothing challenging us? We have no real desire to change or grow or be different because no one can compete with us, right? Right? I mean, take a look at YouTube. YouTube literally has no direct competition, so do they ever improve? No. In fact, they just get worse and worse over the years. That's kind of been the situation with WWE for quite a while. Um,. To the point where now you have a major competitor that may be able to stand up and, and do something with them. So we'll find out. You know, we'll see what happens. So keep me in the loop of AEW. All right. All right. Continuing on. Shout out to Shady's Minion who has subscribed to the channel. Thank you, Shady's Minion, for the subscription. I appreciate that. Kanji Monster did a 50 bit cheer and said you should add Fire Emblem Three Houses to the lineup since a lot of games are f finishing up. No. I honestly, very frankly, have no desire to play Fire Emblem. I'm being very honest with you. I just don't care about the franchise. I don't care about this game. I don't even know why people are asking me to play it. When I never talked about Fire Emblem, I've never done a playthrough of one before. I never expressed desire to play it. Um, and from all reports, it's going to be a longer, drawn-out game. I've already just finished Final Fantasy uh, IX. Before then, it was Phoenix Wright. Like, how many of these insane... I'm playing I'm playing Judgment right now, for God's sakes. How many of these style games do you really want me to play? Back to back to back. You see what I mean? Um, the only situation I would consider playing Fire Emblem is if, within the next couple of weeks, for whatever reason, things dry up, and it seems like there's really not that much going on you know, with games for me, and I can't really figure out stuff to fill the time then I would consider maybe starting it up as a playthrough. But the problem is, I, I almost guarantee what would happen, I'm probably not going to finish it in time before all the new releases hit in August. If you guys aren't aware, the last week of August has, I believe, like seven new releases. That's I'm not even like making that up. I think it's like there's a new episode of Life is Strange. There's two survival horror games. There's one or two other style, Japanese-centric style games. And there's another one. Too. In fact, hold on a second. Let me go take a look. Oh, yeah, there's Control, Control, Astral Chain, Blair Witch, Man of Medan, Life is Strange. So, one, two, three, there's six. <laughs> and I, I don't even know if I got all the games written down. There's six new games at the end of August, within one week. Okay, one fucking week. Six new games. So, 
I guarantee you what's going to end up happening is, number one, I can't play all those games. There's no fucking way, right? So I'm going to have to pick and choose which games I actually play at the end of, uh, at the end of August. And there's going to be a backlog of games people are going to want to see me play that I didn't play. And then, you know, what if I'm playing Fire Emblem and all of a sudden a bunch of new game releases come out that people want to see way more because I'll tell you right now, Fire Emblem will never be anything more than a niche playthrough. Meaning a game that, you know, maybe my most hardcore viewers want to watch, but outside of that, no one's going to be checking that out as a new release. You know, just being honest, that's, that's not my viewing audience. When it comes to new releases, they're not going to care about that. After more than one session, the, the, the attendance will drop dramatically. So, <clears throat> what I'm concerned is, you know, spend the money, pl start playing the game, play it for a week or two, and then, oh, now it's on the back burner forever to the point where no one cares anymore, and I never finish it. Which just happened with a, with a bunch of these Japanese-centric, long, drawn-out style games before, where they just take so uh, goddamn long to beat, and they become repetitive, and people don't really care about them after a few sessions, that they just end up going by the wayside. I don't want that to happen, you know? I don't. I don't want that to happen at all. It would make no sense for me to take that risk. So, like I said, let's play it by ear. Let's see how the month goes. All right, dependent on how the month goes, we'll determine what I do. All right, so we'll see what happens as we get into August here. Okay? All right, continuing on. Super Slade gifted a subscription to Kanishi. So, congrats to Kanishi. And thank you, Super Slade, for the support. That is appreciated very much. Oh, no. I think the Domio is wearing off because I just yawned. That's not good. I told you guys I barely got any sleep last night. <clears throat> so, oh, man. I guess we'll see how this goes today. Almighty Ming Levo did a 100-bit cheer. He said, Phil, why do you delete your Twitch video on demand? Wouldn't it be a good idea to have your footage in more than one place if anything happened to your YouTube channel? I don't know if you ever explained. There's multiple reasons why I don't have... Twitch videos on demand. Allow me to explain. The first is because people have told me over the years that they want me, that even though I became a full-time streamer, they want me to keep putting my videos up on my YouTube channel, DSP Gaming. For some, it's just tradition. I've been having, uploading videos to that channel since 2010. It's been the go-to place to watch my content for nine plus years. It just makes sense to keep that channel alive and going, despite the fact I barely make any money on it. I do make some, just not a lot. And it would be make no real sense to just abandon the channel completely when there's thousands of people, that's not even exaggerating, still thousands of people who check out my videos there on a daily basis <clears throat> and they enjoy watching it there. Number two, a lot of people have told me they have no problem whatsoever watching my videos on YouTube, but whenever they try to watch something on Twitch, they can't because of bandwidth limitations of the internet and the fact that Twitch streams and Twitch videos on demand take up way more bandwidth apparently um than watching an on-demand video on youtube does okay now i don't know i don't know the technicalities of any of that i don't all i know is what people tell me and people have told me yeah this is this is the case that um you know watching the video on youtube because you can adjust the bit rate you can adjust all this this stuff it's very easy to watch it's more digestible when you watch on twitch it's like it takes up tons of bandwidth and a lot of people say they, they have issues watching the on-demand videos on Twitch, okay? So that's reason number two, that I don't use Twitch as videos on demand. Now, reason number three, and this is probably the biggest one, all right, is very simple. Uh, contractually, I am obligated to only have videos on one site at a time with advertisements on them, okay? That's a contractual obligation that I have both with YouTube and with Twitch. When you sign into their, the partner programs for either one of these companies or when you sign up for them, there is a contract that you sign that says your content temporarily becomes the property. And, well, not Excuse me. I just completely misspoke. The, the, you retain legal uh, ownership of your content. However, by uploading said video to a website under a partnership program, you are giving the website legal permission to advertise on those videos and take a cut. That's kind of the deal. You know, you upload a video to YouTube uh, as part of the partner program. You put an ad on that video. They take a cut, right? Now, according to the contract, you can only do this on one side at a time. So, for example, if I do a gameplay stream of Street Fighter here on Twitch and I leave 
that stream up on demand. Well, Twitch puts ads on that automatically because I'm part of the partner program. Legally, that means I'm not supposed to put that anywhere else. Now, I can. I could, I could double dip. All right? I absolutely could. But that's illegal. It actually breaks the contract that I have with Twitch as being part of the partner program. Now, don't get me wrong. There's tons of people who do this. There are. There's absolutely a ridiculous amount of people who not only stream, but they also archive their, their, their archives here on Twitch, and then they go upload it somewhere else and put ads on it anyway. All right? That doesn't make it right. That doesn't make it legal. And the bottom line is that if ever YouTube or Twitch um, decided that they wanted to actually enforce their partnership contracts, all right, they could come out and slam someone like me with basically a cease and desist and say it's this simple. Either you take the videos down from one or the other, and if you don't, uh, we're going to kick you out of the partner program. Or, to go even a step further, it could just be grounds for termination from a partner program. They could just say, well, we just found you in gross excess violation because you have your videos up on two sites making double dipping, making money on two sites. So, sorry, you're kicked out. All right? Now, last time I checked, uh, I don't make a lot of money on either site for advertisements. I'm going to be honest here. Even the ad breaks that I run on Twitch... I maybe make a couple bucks a day. And that's not me, me, me exaggerating. I probably make a few dollars a day on advertisement revenue on Twitch. Even when I have streams with, with, with a big new release, 1,000 people, and I run an ad, I probably make like two bucks. So I don't really care about advertisement revenue on Twitch at all. It's non-existent. Yes, even with the terrible ad revenue that I make over on YouTube, it's still more than that, what I make on Twitch. Okay? So just being... Very matter of fact, all right, and just being very honest um, about it, uh, the bottom line is this. Uh, I The reason that I don't do it is because you can't double dip, and it makes more sense for me to continue to put those videos on my YouTube channel than on my Twitch channel, okay? Um, so all that being said, there you go, guys. That's the deal, and that's why, okay? Uh, anyway, let me get... This guy up on the leaderboard is the top cheer of the day because he is. That was a 100-bit cheer. Thank you. Continuing on. Tex tipped me $2. That's the first tip of the day. Thank you, Tex. He says, How long? I'm a long-time viewer. I plan to start streaming on Twitch. I was wondering, what advice would you give me for just starting out? Oh, man. I guess I would say, number one, if you're just starting out, try to pick a game genre that you're really into and or that maybe you've already played in the past um, so that you feel more comfortable when you're playing the game um, rather than doing a game totally cold turkey because one of the key things about succeeding on Twitch today, which is very different from when I started streaming you know, years and years ago, you need to have interaction with your audience. All right, If you just ignore your audience completely and pretend like they're not there, chances are they ain't going to come back. They want to have a personal connection with you. Okay, If you're playing a game you already have played and you're good at or you already know about and you're just playing it as like an enjoyable playthrough versus, oh, first time playing, a lot of stress here because I try to, kind of try to succeed in a game I don't know anything about, chances are you're going to have a more ample opportunity to interact with your audience, right? So I would say if you're going to get started, try something that you've already, you're already familiar with. Don't try to jump into something completely new out of nowhere. All right, that's number one. Number two, um... Just be natural, be yourself, and don't try to be too fake or forced because there's already a million people to do that. There's already a million people with stupid gimmicks, acting like fools, you know, dyeing their hair, pretending to be something they're not to get kitty views on YouTube, or excuse me, kitty views on Twitch, YouTube too, but kitty views on Twitch. For me, I've always been successful just being me and not being that asshole who puts on a front, all right? Now that's just me. It may, you know, I'm just saying, maybe for you it's something different, but you're asking for my advice. That's what's always been successful for me is just to be my natural self. And, you know, especially the last two and a half years that I've been an interactive streamer, just, just interacting honestly with people and having fun with games has been the biggest success story for me. Not doing silly stunts, not putting on fake shit. You know what I mean? Um, so that would be my advice, you know? And hopefully... You know, playing something that you already know you're a little bit more natural with 
allowing the, yourself to have more interaction with your audience and just being yourself will be engaging enough that, that you'll get people come in, coming back, whether it's two people or whether it's 2,000 people or whether it's 2 million people, right? Um, that's what it's all about. The last thing I'll give you as a piece of advice, text: don't get disheartened if no one shows up. Don't get disheartened if um, you get told you're not very good at it when you start. The bottom line is today, it's a cutthroat industry. Everyone's trying to get into it. Everyone's trying to make a quick buck doing this. And everyone thinks it's easy. It's not. All right? It's not. It's very tough. I'm lucky that I already had a ground level entry uh, opened to me from already being part of a YouTube audience and bring that YouTube audience over to my Twitch channel. If I didn't have that, who knows if I ever would have ever been successful as a Twitch streamer? Probably not. So I'm very lucky. You, someone starting starting down with nothing, it's going to be a lot more tough. You don't, you're not going to have that fan base to support you to start. Don't be disheartened if it's not successful at first. The bottom line is if you're just enjoying what you're doing and having fun with games, that's really what matters. It doesn't matter if anyone shows up at all. As long as you're having a good time, that's what it's all about, right? Fair enough? All right. Uh, Purple Urkel cheered and said, why don't you remove the ability to overdraw your bank account? Uh, because then nothing would get paid at all. <laughs> now, th the thing is, a bank account doesn't infinitely let you overdraw it. It doesn't. You know, it gets to a point and then it just stops clearing payments. But at least in the past couple of months, there's been some payments that end up clearing and then I can back pay them later. If I if I turned off the overdraw bank account, I wouldn't be paying bills for two weeks and I basically would have no power. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't, you know what I mean? Like, if that's insanity. That would be really fucking stupid to do that. I'm just saying... Rather get the bills paid and then pay a fee for it later and backfill it than not pay the bills. And now, trust me, a, let me put it this way. A $35 late, or excuse me, overdraft fee on a bank account is much less than accrued late fees on a bill that you can't pay on time month after month after month. It's that simple. Okay? So there you go. Magnus Flamebeard did a 50-bit cheer. And he said... Good evening, Phil. Hi, go how's it going, Magnus? Hopefully you're doing well. Good to see you on the stream. Swinging by for Mario. Prepare for Rage. That's all I have to say. I know you've been on a lot of chill streams lately, but prepare for Rage today. These Mario streams really drive me up the wall. But this is the last one for a while, so. Super Flash cheered. He said, I hope you can get those subs. I really want the rage to happen. You know, I, I do too. As you guys know, as a variety streamer, I love doing a variety of stuff. And even though some games cause me rage and some don't, particularly I do enjoy... Doing special events. The special events always have a, 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 a cool feeling about them. A nice hype around them. And this is one that I thought would be something a little bit different. You know, this year, most of my special events have been based around retrospective streaming. Which, you know, it can only get you so far. And I've already done that so many times. I wanted to do something different this month. But, sadly, I don't know what's going to happen here. Being very honest, I just don't know. Um, <clears throat> with, with only a day and a half left. We basically, essentially what we're relying on is a couple very generous parties coming in and gifting a lot of subs to make the sub goal happen. Uh, I don't think that's very realistic. That's why I took the goal off the stream three days ago or four days ago, whatever it was. And then people begged me to bring it back, so I did. Okay, so um, it is what it is. We'll see what happens the next day and a half. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Continuing on with Frank Booth. He sent me a dollar. I said, did you get my email about FIFA? I'm going to donate to you when it's out so you can try for a couple of streams. I'm happy to hear there are positive news coming. Keep up the good job. Uh, no, I don't think I got any email about FIFA. I'm not saying you didn't send it. I'm saying I didn't see it. And it could have been that it just got caught up in a mass amount of emails that I get every day. Or it could have hit my spam folder. I'm not sure. What I would say is try again. Send it to darksidephilahotmail.com. And we can talk a little bit about it and try to figure out the specifics. But right now, I have no idea, you know, I, did, I didn't get anything about that. So, apologies if you did send something and you didn't see nothing, okay? I got a dollar tip from someone who had been banned. Um, I believe this is someone who had asked for me to review their unban, and I did. And basically, they just said a bunch of stupid, nasty stuff. Um, I can't confirm that, but I can confirm right now by taking a look. Let me, I, I'll take a look right now, just to make sure that I'm not misspeaking. I want to make sure I'm not, you know... Blanket slandering someone, and that's not the case. Let's take a look here. Oh, yeah. Let's see. So, their last few messages asked me, what's my favorite detractor meme? 
then saying, aren't your tips for bills? And then joking about not being able to contribute because he bought a high-end computer. Basically, a bunch of shit about making fun of the fact that I need support from my viewers. Uh, referencing detractors. Basically, everything that violates the rules. So basically, it's like multiple rule violation after violation after violation. Then you emailed me asking, I can't understand why I got banned. Like, well, I can because you're an asshole. So that's why you're banned because you're an asshole. And no, I'm not unbanning you because you're an asshole. So there you go. I don't know why people... uh. Don't think that I don't have the ability to check the logs, because I do. <laughs> okay, rest in peace, Seth Rollins. Tip me a dollar. Did you see an attack from Brock on Seth Rollins last night? It was damn near attempted murder. Uh, no, I didn't see Raw. As you guys know, I've told you guys this. Uh, I don't have television anymore. I have Hulu, and I have to wait at least 24 hours to watch any WWE show on Hulu, because that's how long it takes for it to show up. Uh, I did see some people on social media talking about it. But I didn't see it. I more than likely will end up seeing it within the next couple of days if and when I get a chance to watch it. So there you go. But thank you for the tip very much. Rest in peace, Seth Rollins. And yes, it is fake. However, uh, a lot of the times guys in wrestling, they take bumps. They take some serious, you know, uh, attacks. Uh, and sometimes they get hurt inadvertently. I wouldn't be surprised if Brock Lesnar's involved that Seth Rollins did really get hurt. <laughs> I'm just saying. Brock Lesnar, not exactly the most immune debauch guy ever. So... Misfit Knight did a 100-bit cheer. Thank you very much to the Misfit Knight for a 100-bit cheer. And then Vote Democrat did a 111-bit cheer, all right, and said, I'm, I'm taking a weed edible later. Any tips for a chill high? No. As I told you guys, I only ever, you know, partook in marijuana when I was a teenager. I only did it a few times. I didn't like it. Haven't done it since then. I'll be the last person to be asking about this seriously. Like, even if I had, it was so long ago, the, anything wouldn't even apply to today. Um, so, no, I'm the last person to ask, but thank you very much, Vote Democrat. You're the top cheerer of the week. Excuse me. Yeah, of the week. With that one cheer, you became the top cheerer of the day and the week. How about that? <clears throat> okay. Continuing on, Hidden is back, cheered, and said, Hello, my friend Griff. What? Basically, his friend Griff wants a shout-out. Okay, shout-out to Griff. There you go. I don't even know what... <laughs> he typed this really elaborate message that was confusing. I'm not going to read all that. I'm just going to say, all right, shout-out to Griff. Okay, everyone, so a couple things. First thing I'd like to do, I'd like to check sub count because we just had a lot of people who subscribed. Let's see if the sub count went up or down and if we're any closer to hitting our goal. We were at 558. Excuse me, 458. We're not at 463. So we did go up a few subs. That's a good thing. We're still a far cry away from hitting the sub goal for the month, but we did get an increase. That's a great thing. Uh, thank you to everyone who has subbed so far today. Um, also, very briefly, let's just go through the cheering leaderboard since we don't even have 10 people yet. But shout out to the top cheers of the week who just started up. We have a five, a six-way tie between Hidden His Back, Super Flash, Magnus Flame Beard, Purple Urkel, Kanji Monster, and Buff David Bennett. All tied at 50 bits at fourth place. Third place is and in and second place is a tie. Hundred bits. That's Misfit Knight and Almighty Ming Levo. And then Vote Democrat is in first place right now. <clears throat> okay. Fair is not fair. Blah. Fair enough. Blah. <laughs> Blah. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, we just had a lot of stuff to talk about on this pre-stream. We're finally going to end it, it looks like, because it looks like the, cont the contributions have calmed down a bit here. What we're going to be doing is alternating between the top stages of Super Mario Maker 2 and the user-suggested uh, stages that people have sent me via email. And we're going to go back and forth trying them out for a couple hours, then take a break, then come back and do some more. That's the entirety of my first stream. Reminder, later tonight will be the continuation of my, my judgment playthrough on the late stream. One final reminder. I really do need your support right now, guys. Uh... As much as possible because financially I'm in a real bad bind. The best way you can help me out right now is by tipping me. Tipping me, I, I can put that straight towards Bill. So please consider tipping me if at all you can. All right, everyone? Um, that is it for the pre-stream. <clears throat> it's time to end the pre-stream and get started with some Mario gameplay. <clears throat> Fair enough? All right, everybody. Thank you very much for the support. Let's end this pre-stream. Let's get the show on the road. Here we go.